founder is Len Bosak, who's a co-founder of Cisco. Uh, he was one of the original people who uh, invented and promoted the router in enterprises. And with us, he is our guiding light, uh, not only our funder, but also our principal contributor. And he's always had an interest in using simple technology for enterprises in this space. Currently, um, we, so we technically would count as a startup. Uh, in fact, we've had more than 10 years experience with high-speed data communications equipment. I think we have a customer almost in every continent. And uh, we are basically engineers. I'm the on only engineer who can talk, so they sent me here to talk to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So talk about uh, your, your box, if you will, and uh, where does it fit in a carrier's network or where would it fit in a um, infrastructure provider's network? Okay. Uh, most of our uh, requests that come in, uh, we have, uh, this is a, <laughs> a bumpy year for us right now, are for people who are building out new networks, enterprises who are building out new networks. I'm on record as saying nobody's building out new networks anymore and nobody uses dark fiber anymore and we're covered in dark fiber and new networks. So it just shows how good I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but the requirement is for a simple, low cost, low power, easy to install, easy to maintain, easy to manage, simple appliance, where once before there was a cabinet full of, of stuff. Uh, bottom line, we aggregate and transport data very high bandwidth, often between data centers, but also between data centers and point of presence or point to point connections of, of any kind. Uh, 10, 10 G connections are normal. And, 10 uh, X. 10x 10g. For people uh, with my kind of experience who thought that 1g was more power than I'd ever need, yep. I'm here to tell you that 10 10 g is, is the going rate right now. And um, that's how things are, and everyone says it can't grow any more than this. It is growing more than this. It is so on one side of your box you're aggregating uh, fiber connections and then you're not routing, but you're you're providing uh, an appliance. Yes, yeah, yeah, so a, a, a single, fi single fiber optic cable comes in, and we split into, into how many DWDM channels it is, uh, up to 96, though frequently 10, 20, 40. Yep. And uh, on the client side, the customer's side, there are routers, there are switches, there's all kinds of equipment at different speeds, and we aggregate all of that and send it to this one far place. Okay. And that far place could be in California from New York City, or it could be three miles down the, the uh, street of the uh, same city. Yeah, uh, recently, three miles away, uh, last week, uh, across the state, uh, but it could be international. Uh, the minimum distance is zero. The maximum distance for a single appliance, probably 1,500 kilometers. I mean, it, yeah. it depends. Um, most corporate data centers are actually relatively close to each other. Yeah, and so what do you see um, in terms of additional services you can start layering on top of uh, your, your basic appliance? Okay. Um, most people are, the internet has changed and networking has changed. And in the last five years, there's been unusual growth and there's been lots of different kinds of data that are happening, partly due to Facebook and other social media, but partly due to the fact that virtualization has put um, servers in lots of places where there weren't servers before. Uh, before you would set up a connection and the connection would stand for 100 months. You know, you've set up a wave. Now you set up a connection with the server and it stands for 100 seconds. And so there is a lot more connection that's happening now for the same amount of work. Also, the data model now is, and there's some Harvard study on this that I'm very interested in. 12 years ago, I go to the doctor, I get fixed, I pay. There's probably eight or 10 servers get touched. Nowadays, I go to the doctor and I pay. There's 130 servers get touched because of marketing, the internet model, um, am I still a good credit person? Am I part of this category of old men who have this kind of medicine? A whole bunch of marketing things happen. But not many people have, most people have kept their intuitive idea that going to the doctor is an eight or 10 server thing. So if you're planning a network and think that going to the doctor is just a simple transaction, it is for the first client, but it's not for the data centers. The other thing is that virtualization now is widespread and you may have said, okay, I'll take another 100 servers. Here they go. And you plant 100 servers somewhere in your data centers. They may be in the wrong place to do this. And so you, the data centers finish up generating their own traffic 
which you could count as administrative traffic, and it takes much more nowadays to do what was done before. So 1G was fine before, 10G was a dream, 10G is normal now, 100G is coming in. Yeah. And for links between data centers, the amount of data is beyond intuition, it's surprisingly high. We've lost the ability to forecast what the data requirements are between data centers. Right. And I'm not just saying that because I'm marketing director. And what do you think is the key driver behind that um, demand side? I was talking to some of our competitors. I've been taking the opportunity, I meet them so rarely. I've been going around shaking hands and we're all finding the same thing. We have no idea. Uh, the business goes up and we think, well, okay, that's, that's that. And then the phone rings again and there's business again. There's, there's unbelievable amount of business from enterprises who are building out or extending their existing networks, but it's certainly rising. And it's not rising at a nice monotonic thing. It's coming on in leaps and bounds. And so I'm kind of impatient sometimes with um, what is the trend in the market. If I'm an IT manager, I don't care about the trend in the market. I want, want to know what's happening Wednesday. And before, you used to keep about half your capacity free in case you got a peak. I'm here to say that's not enough. So when you talk about, when you say enterprise, are you talking specific enterprise vertical markets? Are you talking, what are you talking about? Financial I'm, services, I'm carrier, um, cable? Uh, all I do is ship data. Other people sort it, they calculate it, other people have service, it's other people's data centers. I perform a single specialized function, right. which is get this data to the right place very, very, very quickly. But there is um, a trend among enterprises for simpler and simpler technology. Servers are getting less expensive. Okay. Routers are getting less expensive. And we follow that trend. Uh, okay. we're, we're part of the enterprise budget model. Okay. And we don't have the same history with carriers. And yeah. we don't have the same investment in making sure that carrier to carrier communications stay good. So if I were a carrier to carrier, I would focus on an OTN. If I am enterprise, I would focus on ethernet and Ethernet, I have to say, is here to stay. Yeah. So XKL. What's XKL. The, what does it mean? What's the, uh, what's the story behind the name? I'm embarrassed. It's, from, it's some old science fiction joke from about 10 years ago, <laughs> and I'm not much of a science fiction reader. Right. So for once, I'll pass. I'm not sure what XKL stands Fair for. Fair enough. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much.